Hello, my name is Dr. Stephanie West, and today we're going to talk about the art of assessments. Planning and implementing effective assessments is a fundamental part of instruction and learning. An effective assessment plan answers the following two questions. What do I want my students to be able to do as a result of my teaching? And two, how do I know the students learned what I taught? When these questions are asked and answered regularly and consistently, you as the teacher can effectively plan, diagnose, intervene on a continual basis to raise student achievement. This video will show the process of developing effective assessments along with describing each of the assessments used within every classroom. First, we must align the, the assessments to the state standards. The assessment of each lesson or unit plan should support the standard or learning target taught. If the teacher's objective was to analyze examples of cause and effect in informational text, the assessment should be aligned by having students analyze and not identify examples of cause and effect using informational text. So an example of this would be, the learning target or objective would be students will analyze informational text to identify cause and effect relationships. So the assessment would state this, using a social studies text, students analyze a given passage for examples of cause and effect. Students must justify how and why the examples chosen are cause and effect relationships. The next step is to have a clear and concise measurement plan. The teacher's assessment plan should be clearly measurable and the criteria need to be explained to students prior to the assessment. By having criteria that are measurable, the teacher should have a clear picture as to which students mastered the objective. Rubrics are the most used and common way of measuring criteria. When using a rubric, make sure that the assessment criteria are clearly defined before developing the rubric itself. The criteria should be established by the teacher with the student needs in mind. Therefore, students would understand the difference between scoring a 1 or a 5 in a particular category of the rubric prior to the beginning of the assignment. Assessment plans should measure student performance in multiple ways to ensure mastery of the objective. This provides students opportunities to demonstrate mastery through a variety of formats. Assessments should be differentiated for the needs of the students. So here are some assessment examples, projects, experiments, presentations, essays, short answer, and multiple choice tests. Both informal and informative assessments should be used throughout a lesson to ensure that students are mastering the lesson objectives. Here are some examples of both informal and formative testing methods. First, informal. Exit slips, Kahoot, observations, running records, questions and answers, thumbs up, thumbs down, journaling, oral presentations, checklist, and stop and go card. And here's some examples of formative assessments. Four corners where the kids stand in their corner of choice where they strongly agree, agree, somewhat disagree, and strongly disagree. There's also three summaries you can do with the first summary being just 15 words, the second 30 words, and the third is 100 words. You can do self-evaluations, a partner quiz is fun, where the teacher will provide an open-ended question and have the students work in partners to solve the problem or answer the question. Transfer the concept. Apply the learning to a different content area. Think, pair, share. Jigsaw. Two roses and a thorn. List two concepts that are clear and one that is not so clear. Reflections and then translate. Have the students put the learning into their own words, justifying why they came up with that information. The final assessment within a unit of study is the summative assessment. This assessment should be aligned to the unit or lesson plan standards, target learning, and objective. 
The goal of summative assessments are, one, it occurs at the end of a chapter or unit, two, it evaluates what students have learned, three, covers complete content areas, assigns a grade to a student's understanding, and lastly, emphasizes the product of student learning. Here are some examples of some summative assessments. End of unit or chapter test, final projects, portfolios, interactive notebook checks, journal checks, midterms, final exams, district benchmark exams, achievement testing, and of course standardized testing. The goal here is to gather relevant information about students' performance or progress or to determine student interest to make judgments about their learning process. I hope you enjoyed your time with me today and I hope you will join me again in the coming weeks. As always, please visit my web page and blog for all the latest upkeeps and updates and have a wonderful day.